Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, coming at you with another zombie movie. And this is one of the most fun original zombie movies I've ever seen. It's from 2010, Dead Snow from Norway. This is an awesome movie. Yeah, it's, as the cover suggests, z Nazi zombies. Which has always been sort of a popular subgenre within the zombie subgenre. I mean, of course, you know, Call of Duty has, which I don't play, Nazi zombies. There's a bunch of really bad Nazi zombie movies out there. This has a sequel, which I've never seen. I think it's American. But yeah, so Dead Snow came out of Norway, and this movie's just balls to the wall fun. It's sort of a horror comedy, like if you take Return of the Living Dead, put it in Norway during the winter, make it Nazi zombies. You know, also like Evil Dead 2, it's just gory fun, and, and unlike Automaton Transfusion, which was a piece of shit movie that had accolades all over the cover... Entertainment Weekly, one of the 25 best zombie movies of all time. I'll give it that. Peter Travers, Rolling Stone. There's a storm of scary fun to be had in this splatterfest. A Real Scream and Dread Central even said destined to become a cult classic. Yeah, this movie's awesome. Lots of fun. Lots of just gore for the sake of being gore but in a fun crazy way kind of like dead alive but nowhere near that fun or awesome but it's still great these group of friends who are also med students they go out to this cabin out in the Norwegian mountains for snowmobiling and they're encountered by these sort of urban legend kind of Nazi zombies. wonder how many times I can say Nazi zombies in one video. I mean, it's it's kind of slow to, because, you know, actually, it has a great opening. It opens up sort of, sort of nighttime. For anyone who lives in a cold area, like me, I live in Maine, sort of that dusk feeling where it's like a very deep blue outside, but dark. There's this woman running through the woods and the mountains with the music In the Hall of the Mountain King by uh, Edward Grieg. Classical piece of music. It's in a shit ton of movies. That... It just keeps building up. She's chased by these Nazi zombies just as the music picks up. And why it's original, I mean, there's, there's a legend behind the Nazi zombies. They don't necessarily eat people. They they kill them sort of systematically, like with weapons. But there's also a reason behind it, and they can be bargained with. Uh, towards the beginning, they're all in the cabin. This old guy shows up asking for coffee. And he tells them the story of how back in World War II, there was a German command post that was stationed in this small village near the mountains led by Colonel Herzog and they tortured and beat the people relentlessly during their occupation then finally as the war was ending they realized they were kind of screwed so they took all valuables from people all gold silver you know by means of violence they took everything they could then the people revolted killed some of them they retreated to the mountains where they supposedly starved to death and in the years since then people have kind of been going missing of course their friends kind of dismiss him he leaves he gets killed in his tent he stabbed about 40 times with a bayonet by a Nazi zombie next day they all go snowmobiling and then that night is probably around the 45 minute mark from then on of a 92 minute movie is almost non-stop 
zombie fun. And, you know, this movie is pretty silly. Like, there's this one kid who looks like a young Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's like the horror movie nerd. He even wears a brain dead shirt. Which brain dead over in Europe is what they call a, a, a dead alive. Which is cool. There's this one girl who sort of is into him. He goes out to the outhouse to have a shit. As soon as he's done wiping his ass, she comes in, starts kissing him. Starts sucking on his fingers with the hand he wiped with. And this is even funny because he's like, no. And then she fucks him on the toilet. Then he goes back inside. And I mean, a zombie like sucks her in through the shit, you know, the shithole. And it's kind of cool because when she comes out, there's steam coming off of her. I mean, I don't know what the half-life is for poop heat. Because it doesn't really show too many people using that outhouse. And she's like stabbed. And you know that's where it all begins. They see zombies outside. The Philip Seymour Hoffman kid. He gets pulled through a window. You see up close of his eyes. It's like blood and like this weird orange liquid. Which I thought was a nice touch. And his whole head gets ripped in half. See his brains and everything. All practical effects. There is some CGI, yeah. But at least with the CGI, there's a shit ton of practical effects. And the rest of the movie is just fun in general also. There's this other guy, Roy, who's sort of the smartass. After the kid gets his head ripped in half and dragged outside, everyone's sort of standing there and he's like, I knew we should have gone to the beach. So just kind of twisted humor. And then, of course, the next day, they got to figure out what they're going to do. The guy we're supposed to believe is our lead character. He was dating the girl that got killed in the beginning. He sets off on his snowmobile to find her because she was going to hike there alone. And from there, there's two guys and two girls. One of the guys, his name's Martin. He's a med student, but he's afraid of blood. Him and Roy decide to make noise with pots and pans so the girls can run away to try to get back to the car, or the cars. And for most of the movie, it's going back and forth between you know the girls' venture and the guys back at the cabin. And it's fun. Crazy fun. I mean, the girls, like... One girl's getting eaten. I can't remember how she initially gets attacked. but she... and There's this cool shot where it's sort of hazy. And it's her POV. She looks down. She can actually see the zombies eating her intestines. So I guess they do eat. But they don't. Not the way normal zombies do. She blows herself up. I can't remember where she gets the explosives. But. Then the other girl, you know, she's Martin's girlfriend. She's a dreaded uh, hippie chick. She hides up in a tree, but there's a bird's nest, and the mother bird is, like, cawing. Zombies pass by. <clears throat> she kills the bird, but when she looks down, there's these two Nazi zombies just, like, looking up at her. One starts climbing. She grabs a branch and just, like, jumps down, goes through its face. And then she's on, like, a cliff. There's, like, a cliff with a bunch of, like, snow. And she's standing on it. And she's, like, stomping as one's coming to her and it breaks. Way cooler than how Vin Diesel did it in, what was it, Fast 7, where he's on the parking garage stomping and just breaks the whole building down. Stupid. <clears throat> she gets buried in snow, which, in the beginning, the guys are talking about being buried in an avalanche. And if it ever happens, all you have to do is spit and look at the gravity. That's how you know which way to dig. She doesn't spit, but we see her stunt. She's able to dig herself out. And I liked... She looks over and the zombie that was with her is like buried up to his head. Now you think it's going to be like a football kick. Like kick the head off. But it was, uh, it was stylized. I like how they did it. 
she kicks and just the screen is full of blood. Now what the guys do, because you see Colonel Herzog, he's sort of up away. Like there's these cool shots up close of him with binoculars. And in the background out of focus is like rows of his soldiers. You'll see him sort of go like this. And then like in the background you see him all scurry away. Cool little shots like that. And I mean, they make, it's fucking stupid. They're in the cabin, and they're going to make Molotov cocktails with moonshine. So Roy goes to throw it, and he fucking misses, hits next to the window, cabin burns down. And so now they're outside, they make it to the shed. You know, Martin gets a chainsaw and a hatchet. Roy has a, a sledgehammer and I guess like a little rock hammer. And they... It's like this cool little song. It like shows them walking. And the camera does like this swooping pan. You just see like almost a dozen of them just like running towards them. <clears throat> they hack and slash through all of them. Gore everywhere. Also, the boyfriend who left to find his girlfriend. You know, he gets attacked. He finds this cave where they live where they have like swastikas and like helmets actually I think that's his girlfriend's head he gets attacked he 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 gets a machine gun but like I was texting my girlfriend at the same time and I don't know if it's something he had on his snowmobile he could have got it from the cave because it's a modern one maybe he did and there's a lot of cut sort of like a, a, a requiem for a dream where it's like those like show something some like like a requiem for a dream it shows like the spoon the needle the arm the pupils like <laughs> there's like shots like that of them like getting their their weapons ready like fast cuts but then when the boyfriend like makes it back to them, after Martin and Roy have killed a bunch of them, they're all covered in blood. The one guy, one zombie jumps on him. And he takes him and he puts his snowmobile on it. And when he revs it, yeah, there's CGI blood. And then, like, this other zombie comes up. He, like, throws his arm in the engine and, like, sucks him in. But then one zombie comes up and stabs him with the bayonet. And then, like, five more come up and stab him. They all stab him at the same time. So when the camera pans out, they all do like this. It's kind of cool. And they pick him up, and when they rip him, like, all his limbs off, they're CGI. But other than that, it's pretty much all practical. And, like, the best scene was the only one that's left is Colonel Hartzog. And he does this cool thing where he like throws his head back and he, he yells. It almost sounds like a death metal scream. Like, Rawr. even with audio, uh, English audio, it's still a Norwegian, but he says rise. And like 50 of them pop out of the ground. Fucking awesome. At one point earlier in the film, Roy is talking about something I can't remember what the conversation is but it leads to him saying something about looking down and it's the old man when the old man that tells him the story is leaving he sort of says something because they're kind of blowing him off he says something like yeah well, what are you going to do when you look down and see your own intestine hanging out or you're holding your own intestine Roy runs into a tree and then he's like stumbling, but when he turns around and like stabs through him, his intestine got hooked to it. But anyway, so how, what's different about these zombies? All they want is their gold. Like, I know I've spoiled almost the whole movie. It's just, I really like this movie. And, you know, if, if I really hate a movie or if I really love it, I'll just go off and just end up spoiling the whole thing, I guess. I'm not going to 
spoil the very, very ending. But basically, if you give them their gold back, they'll leave you alone. So yeah, they can be bargained with. They're intelligent. They want something. And if you give it to them, they will leave you alone. But also, they kill with weapons. They kill with what's around them. And this movie is just... It's a lot of fun. It's fun in the same sense as like Dead Alive, Evil Dead 2, Return of the Living Dead, or Reanimator. Yeah, the English dubbing is pretty awful. Normally, I would watch it... Usually when I watch foreign films, I'll watch it in their native language and I'll read the subtitles. But this one, is, there's just so much cool shit going on. I don't want to read subtitles. I kind of deal with the bad dubbing. The sequel, I saw a trailer. I was going to pick it. I bought this years ago. Like I bought this probably 2012, I think. But it's a lot of fun. And yeah, even though the first half hour, 45 minutes, which yeah, usually is the build up time for a movie. <clears throat> it's really, really slow. It feels longer. But once the zombie shit starts happening, it's nonstop for the rest of the movie. And it's great. Plenty of gruesome. Like, also, you know, because the, the film geek, once they, he realizes zombies, he sort of turns into J.B. Kennedy from Scream. He's like, don't get bitten. No matter what, don't get bitten. So Martin gets bitten. And he's like, remember what he said about not getting bitten? So he takes his chainsaw, and Evil Dead 2 style, cuts his forearm off. And then one zombie pops out of the ground and starts biting his dick and balls. You don't see anything. You just see the head down there biting with some blood. This big scream, he kills it. And then there's like this awkward silence. Like he looks at Roy, looks at the chainsaw, he looks down, and then Roy is just like, da 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 da. Which, the timing of that was perfect, because it went from being I just got bitten, I gotta sever it. I severed it. Problem solved. And then just as we're processing what just happened, it's like he gets bitten again, down there. It, it just perfect punchline that it wasn't like an out of place zombie biting a dick kind of joke it was perfectly timed and executed martin's girlfriend though the the hippie chick we don't see her for a while after the avalanche and this was one thing this was about as dumb as you know the the cocktail mess he's hacking away at a zombie with a hatchet and we see her tap him on the shoulder. So, of course, he turns around and he hits her. It takes her forever to, to die. You know, they're trying to build emotion like, like, oh, that was stupid. But, yeah, this movie's crazy fun. Lots of practical effects. Lots of Nazi zombies. I know it's a gimmick. And usually the movies are pretty bad. I've seen a bunch, like, physically. I haven't actually watched them, but I've seen them, like, at the store. But yeah, this is one of the best 25 zombie movies ever. I always have fun when I watch this. Very enjoyable. It is sort of like a modern day Return of the Living Dead. Just with its, its originality, its fun, its gore, its comedy. Just, I, I really like this movie. I've... I don't know if I can say it's underrated because I don't know a lot of people that have seen it. I've heard some people like on YouTube say they don't like it, which is fine to each their own. But I would say it's underseen. I mean, it's distributed by IFC. So, I mean, and IFC movies do get around. But yeah, I would highly recommend this. Whether you like gory films, horror comedies, or zombie films... It's all of those. So I would definitely recommend this. Dead Snow, bunch of fun. And Colonel Herzog is a pretty intimidating main villain. I mean, he doesn't really do much. It's just a lot of lumbering around and just how he, like, orders his soldiers. 
or him just like standing there watching everything happen. Very fun movie. Very fun original zombie movie. Definitely recommend it. And very... Okay, the scenes with noticeable CGI are big scenes, but they're very few, and it's mostly very juicy, awesome practical effects. Dead Snow, awesome movie. From Room 237, thank you for watching.